So now it's my turn. I would like to tell you something about publishing architectural models, enterprise architecture models as linked data so that it can be queried or otherwise reused. Um, and before I start, first I would like to explain uh, why, why would you want to do such a thing? Um, we, Arch Excel, we are an architecture consultancy. Um, we've been doing enterprise architecture for, um, well, I've personally been doing that for about 20 years now. And we started with writing uh, Word documents of 50, 100, sometimes 200 pages. So basically documents that nobody really wanted to read. Then came the architectural modeling tools like Archie, Biz Design, uh, Blue Dolphin, you name it. With those tools, you could actually model and create architecture models. But the problem with those tools was they were only available for architects. You could buy a license, you would pay $50,000, and then you would have five to 10 users. So it's not something that you would share within your whole organization. You cannot see this online. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, oh. that's my, that's my uh... No, that's my fault. It's just a title page for the online visitors. <laughs> So what I was saying is that architecture models in the age of modeling tools were not really available for the organization as a whole. And the problem with enterprise architecture is that it's not about the model. So of course, it's all about modeling. I will explain later on, but it's not really about the models. Architecture is, if, you're, if you look at organizational change, then architecture is is making a journey with your whole organization or at least the relevant people in your organization the key people make that journey to understand why your organization needs to change and what impact that change will bring that's what architecture is all about not so much about 200 pages of models and definitions so um when in 2009 Nine, we hired um, a new employee who had just finished his research, his PhD research, on sharing architectural knowledge, not as a document, but as um, a semantic media wiki. Wiki, that was really a, a, a new insight for us because you could really share the knowledge and you would not have to search through those 200 pages for a certain principle, but you could just link to it. So that's what we started doing. And if you, if you continue that, then having it in a week in a semantic media wiki is nice, but wouldn't it be much nicer if you could make it available also in other ways? So that's why we are now uh, researching and experimenting with publishing architectural models as linked data. So let's, let's start. I'm going to explain to you a little more about enterprise architecture and particularly about the Archimate standard for making architecture models. Then I'm going to tell you something about having those models, sharing them using Semantic Media Wiki and a, a, a tool that we created for that, an extension. Then I'm going to explain a little bit more about linked data, but uh, particularly about using vocabularies because sharing architectural knowledge as linked data requires using vocabularies. And then we're going to put the things together. So uh, about enterprise architecture, it's a methodology for describing or even designing your organization in terms of structure and cohesion in business and technology. You do that because organizations are getting more and more complex. So you really need to, to manage that to, 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 to make sure that the increased importance of information is, is somehow reflected in your organization, in your business processes, in your applications and in your technology. And a, an important method to do that is by creating models like this. It's not really important what the blocks are about, but you, you, you define concepts in your architecture in terms of processes, applications, etc., and the relations between them. 
architects usually do that in layers and domains, layers like business, application, and technology. Well, a lot of you are probably familiar with that. So, so you use tools like Archie, which is a, a free tool. I think it's even open source where you can model your architecture. And currently there's also a, a version available where you can store your architecture models, your elements, your relationships, and your views as um, elements in a Git repository. So you can widely use it if you have the tool. But you don't always have the tool. If you're not an architect, you probably won't use Arch because it has an uh, instruction manual. You need to be an architect to understand it and use it. Um, there's also the Open Group. Open Group is the uh, owner of the Archimate standard. They have also defined um, a file format to interchange architecture models between architecture tools. And we can use that. Another example, uh, this is what Archie looks like. And you have a repository on the left with all your elements and views in there. You have a, uh, a palette in the middle where you can draw your elements on and, and, and create relationships, create views. Um, you have a, a context model here. You have a property window like any other architecture tool. What we have done, we have created some software, which is an extension to Semantic Media Wiki, where we can import such an Archimate file and present it in Semantic Media Wiki. And not just as diagrams. You see a diagram here, but the diagram is not an image in Semantic Media Wiki. Basically, what we do is we import the definition of the diagram, which is the location of every object, the link to the object behind uh, the shape on the image, and we generate the view as a scalable vector graphics format in the wiki. On the right-hand side, you see there is um, a legend with properties that you can select. So if you select a certain property, then the, the values of that property on all of the elements is highlighted. So it's the content is really in a semantic format in the semantic media wiki. And you can do anything with it. You can create, um, for example, here on the bottom end, you can create a context diagram. So this view was not modeled in the architecture tool, but semantic media wiki has generated it from the semantic knowledge in the system. It knows that this object called CRM system is somehow related to an application service named insurance application service. It, it knows that because it's, it's, it's available as semantic properties and it can generate this diagram from them. So we have the architecture model semantically in Semantic Media Wiki. And I can prove it because this is the view we all know, a special browse where it shows all these properties of this object called CRM system. So then, about linked data. Now you all know this, of course. Eh? Um, we express linked data as a subject, with a predicate, and an object. And this is how you can create RDF files. You probably know all these standards that we use in the semantic web. So we have standards like RDF, Turtle, or XML, or JSON, or JSON LDA, which was mentioned in the previous presentation. We know query languages like Sparkle. Uh, we know how to describe our knowledge model, our ontology in terms of OWL or RDFS. We can use SCOS. We can use schema.org. We can describe rules in terms of Shackle. You all know this, right? But if we want to publish architecture as linked data, we want to do more. We want to not just publish it, but we want it to be published as being fair. Fair is a principle on how you should preferably publish linked data in a way that it's really findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So these are the fair principles. And it says something like, data are described with rich metadata. Um, 
it says the protocol allows for authentication and authorization procedures where necessary. So linked data is not always linked open data. You can have linked data in a closed format for your own organization. Um, metadata are accessible even when the data are no longer available. Huh? The systems. Even if the data itself is no longer available, you would still like to know what it was about. Um, let's pick another one. Yep, I2, interoperability principle number two, metadata use vocabularies that follow FAIR principles. Okay, what about vocabularies? Why would we need vocabularies? I have a, a simple question for you. Is, is there anybody here from New York? Does anybody know how far New York is from Breda? I have three options. Who thinks that from Breda to New York is 3,660 miles? I have one, two, three. Okay, cool. Who thinks it's only 3,080 miles? Now you can only answer once. Cool. Who thinks it is 1,470 miles? Okay. I have a question. Why are you miles? Sorry? Why are you the wild? I'll explain. Good question. The answer is all three are correct because I didn't specify exactly what I meant. Like miles, indeed. Yeah, I, I mentioned miles, but I didn't say nautical miles or English miles. Did you know there are Dutch miles, French miles, air miles, whatever? I didn't specify whether I was really mentioning the city that never sleeps, New York City, United States. Or did I mention, did I mean, a little village named New York that is somewhere in the east of Ukraine. I had never heard of it until they started bombing it some time ago. There's actually a little village there that was named New York because the first people that lived there came from New York City and they thought, oh, well, Let's name our new village after the city that we came from. So if I do want to, to, to be exact in my statement, I shouldn't just use a name, but I should somehow refer to something that you can understand. For example, Wikidata. To make sure that I use nautical miles, then I could refer to Wikidata entry number Q93318. So if, you, if you go to that URL, it will say, hey, I'm a nautical mile. Same thing, New York, if I want to, if I mean the Big Apple, that's number Q60 in Wikidata. So I can use Wikidata as a vocabulary to refer to, to just make really sure that we know what we are talking about. And that's important in linked data, because if you have two linked data data sets and you want to combine them, to do wonderful things. Eh? You can do really great things with linked data. But if you want to combine data, you should be absolutely sure that you know what the data means, and that you can really combine it. Another example, in, in healthcare in the Netherlands, we have um, institutions that have to report to the, to the inspection uh, on a lot of data. And for example, one of the things they have to report on is the number of employees they have and well, what is an employee is that a person that you that is on your payroll or is an employee something that should be transferred transformed into a full-time equivalent um, and if 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 you talk of full-time equivalent is that 40 hours a week or 36 or in healthcare a lot of people work only 32 hours a week because it's really hard work if one institution reports 140 hour FTEs and the other institution reports 100 part time employees, you have totally different numbers. You can't add them up. You need to know what you mean. You can use the vocabulary to do that. And there are really a lot of vocabularies. What you see here is an overview of vocabularies in use on the semantic web. The size of the, 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 the balls is 
how often, how much it is used. So what you see is that Dublin Core Terms is probably the most used dictionary. Others are both a friend of a friend or um, expressing attributes of persons, ban, scos, well, you name it. Here is schema.org, which is a very important initiative. It's, it's not used that much yet, but it's growing. So, why architecture as linked data? From a more technical perspective. If you look at Archimate definitions and the definition of an application component, the definition of a business process, in Archimate that's still very abstract. So it leaves a lot of room for interpretation, like New York. If you refer to a vocabulary in your linked data representation, then you can be more specific. As I said, it's important to publish your architecture in an accessible way so that other people can use it, even if they're not architects. If you model in Archimate, you really have to be trained in that. If you're looking at an Archimate model, it really requires some prior knowledge. You don't want to be dependent on architecture tools. And another thing is Archimate is a really nice standard where you can model things like application components. But if you model an application component, you want to, to say more about that application component. For example, what technology is used to build it? Uh, how many users does it have? Uh, who's the supplier? Um, where is it in its life cycle? You can't express that in raw Archimate because Archimate doesn't uh, recognize properties. It only recognizes classes and relationships. But if we use a vocabulary like schema.org, they have properties. So we can enrich our Archimate models with those properties so that we can publish more than just Archimate. Um, I'm going to skip this one. Yeah. So um, this is a set of Archimate elements. Not all Archimate has more than this, but these are the most important. These are the classes you can use in Archimate. Now, if we look at schema.org, then we see that a lot of those Archimate concepts are actually available and defined in schema.org. For example, the blue one on top, software application, is a schema.org concept, which is also by the name of application component, a concept in Archimate. If we have a look at schema.org, Archimate just says application component, and it says it can be related to software or it can be related to a business process, but it doesn't say any of these things. Like, for example, <clears throat> does it have a download URL? The Archimate modeling tool, the freeware tool that I showed, has a download URL. I can't express that in Archimate, but I can in schema.org. So using schema.org as a vocabulary really enriches, enhances my options to model architecture. And schema.org is not the only vocabulary available. Um, we have others. We have SCOS. Ferber is a standard from, uh, from, from the, the library sector. Cove, DCAT for modeling catalogs. Dublin Core and for, for document-based. CDOC, CRM. You see, there are so many vocabularies, and they they cover Archimate to a large extent. And the other interesting thing is that you're really into enterprise architecture, and you see that the ones that are not um, covered by a vocabulary, or at least not in this this research, they are probably less important in modeling architecture. So if I model my architecture in Archie, this freeware tool, uh, I have here view and central yellow thing there is a data object or a business object, I should say, named customer file. So it's a record of, of a customer. And I can add properties to that. Now in Archie, I can, I can create any uh, name value pair. So what I can do is here say, I have a property which is named RDF type, so it's a type thing from the REF standard. And it is a value dcat dataset. So the value is 
it's a data set as it has been defined in the DCAT standard. Same thing here with the title, DC terms title. So I use the title property from the DC terms vocabulary and it has a value custom file. It has a DC terms publisher property, which is the publisher property from the DC terms vocabulary, which is named Archie Assurance. So that's the model that we have here. So how can we then transform Archimates to RDF? Now, the ideal thing would be if the open group, the owner of the Archimates standard, had given us um, an RDF representation of Archimate. But they haven't. We've asked for it, but it was a step too far for them. Why RDF? Why would you want to do Archimate in RDF? Why? Well, because it's so nice, but they, they're not up to it yet. Fortunately, there are others who have done that. And um, for example, I have to give credit to uh, Marco Wattinga, who has created on GitHub something named PP4MC2. He has created a mapping from Archimate to RDF. So it's not a formally recognized thing, but it's usable. So we're going to use that. It's available on GitHub. We've made some additions to that. Um, I'll name a few. Creation of URIs that are dereferenceable. If you have leaked data, then it's really nice to have not just an identifier, but to have an identifier that you can actually go to and that will tell you something about this thing that you have identified. Um, using namespaces and prefixes, which makes life a lot easier. Using SCOS, the translation of diagrams to SCOS concepts. And how does it work? Um, what time is it anyway? Can I see that here? Okay, thank you. So what we do is a three or two step process. We start by modeling our architecture in our modeling tool. In this case, Archie. We add semantics as properties, as I just showed you, like the DC terms publisher <coughs> property. When we have that, we export it from Archie as an Archimate exchange file, this open group standard, and we import that into our uh, semantic media wiki. Yeah? We name it Archimedes, that's our, our, our product. It's just a semantic media wiki with an import feature. We model we configure the vocabularies that we want to use in exporting that to link data. For example, if we have an application component and we want to use that thing, that software component as it has been defined in schema.org. And from there we publish it, which means we transform the data from Semantic Media Wiki into an RDF file, RDF Turtle or RDF XML. And we import that into a triple store. Uh, we use Apache for Seiki, but any triple store will do. Once we have it there, it can be queried as any linked data. You will have your architecture model with references to external vocabularies. And then you can, for example, browse it with a linked data browser, such as Cosmos. As Cosmos is an open source uh, tool which you can install on the server and then it creates a website you import your data or you connect it to a triple store and you can browse your data um, we saw that earlier in Arnold's presentation what you can do here is just click an object and you get the data from that object you can even have nice diagrams in it so what we see here is this architecture model of an insurance company we have all the elements from the architecture here and we can just click through and we can even have the diagrams because we have elements the concepts in the architecture but an architectural view is also just an element in your architect architecture we can even have the diagrams included in there 
that's a little extension that we built on top of Cosmos. And we also have the metadata of the model there. It's a publisher, RTXL. It was authored by Danny Gevoer, so credits to Danny for his work. And you can use any other linked data viewer. This is uh, Shovok, which is another viewer to view linked data, specifically vocabulary data. So let's look at, uh, at an example. Um, this is from the Dutch Digital Heritage, Heritage Reference Architecture, abbreviated as DEA, which is an enterprise architecture with a lot of information about uh, digital heritage in the Netherlands. And now one of the things there in the first first one in the list is an, an architecture concept called actor. So someone or something who does something, a person or organizational entity who is capable of performing behavior. One actor can perform different roles. If I click on the RDF icon in front of actor, I get this. <coughs> this is a standard um, semantic media wiki export. But what you see here, and I can, I can just touch it. There's property here, but there's a, all properties are in there. Since one particular property is not named property dot blah blah blah. But it's, uh, it's cos dot prep label. You can in semantic media wiki, it's a standard feature, so perhaps you're already using it. For every property, you can say, okay, I have a property here which is uh, something like name. And if I export this to RDF, I want it to be mapped to um, discuss the vocabulary and more precisely the prep label uh, concept in that vocabulary. You can do that by adding a property to the property page. Yeah? So I, I have a semantic property named uh, name. And by defining that property on a wiki page in the property namespace, I can say import it from SCOS Pref label. Geïmporteerd uit is Dutch for imported from. It's a standard semantic media wiki property. You can use it out of the box. <coughs> so here I say this property called name is actually a SCOS Pref label. But you're not done there because you would also need to create another page in the media wiki namespace, which you name specifically SMW imports SCOS. And that's SCOS, the last four letters here must match the prefix used in that property. And there is here, and I can just, yeah, perf label uh, is of type string. So you define there actually the type of that property. If you do that, you do an RDF export, then you get that property in your RDF file. Now we do this, but we don't use the standard RDF export because, see here, um, where was it? There's a lot of stuff in there that we don't really need in our RDF. We want it to be a little more, uh, to, to be a little tidy. So we use our own version of an RDF export, but basically it does the same as this one. It just filters out the things that we don't need. So we use that um, and we import the data into our triple store. So summarizing, we can semantically represent architecture models and semantic media wiki. We can publish that to link data by using RDF export features. We can align that with external vocabularies to make it more reusable to others. We can use these vocabularies not just to make things, to, 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 to use references, but we can actually enrich our models with that so that we can help create common understanding and improve reuse of data it's not only possible, but it's very useful. Five minutes, but I'm finished. I'm done. Any questions?
Yes, I have a question. Um, you didn't talk that much about the users, the customers of, the, of these ar architecture models. And we all know that it's very easy, relatively easy, to create a nice architecture, but more difficult to, to use that or to um, enforce that. And this is supposed, I think this is supposed to make that, or it makes that easier. Mm -hmm. Can you tell a little bit about yeah. the yeah. customer side and how they use it? Um, how? We, we, we once built a, a showcase model because one of the things that we frequently encounter is that um, an organization has architecture models of its business processes, application landscape, its underlying technology landscape. And they have a different department that is um, running the help desk where people can call if their application doesn't work. Yeah, I can't log in. Why not? I don't know. It says valid data, things like that. Or I want to start my application. I get a, a black screen. It doesn't work. Um, sometimes they have a monitoring system where they can see, oh, this is server number 245. Uh, it has a malfunctioning. Um, if you could combine that information about issues and about servers being down, if you could combine that information with your architecture models, you could not just um, create insights in which part of your application landscape or your technology landscape are vulnerable, but you could also, if you have modeled that properly in Archimate, you could also um, jump to the business processes or even to your business services that are impacted by that. All you would need to do is combine that information. The problem, of course, is you can't do that in Archimate because the the, 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 the IT services department is very likely not using Archimate. They have real-time data for monitoring systems. Um, so how do you combine it? If you could use an API or whatever from your monitoring system to also have that data as link data, and combine it then with your architecture data, you get so much more insight in the vulnerabilities of your business landscape, of your your IT landscape and the impact of that on your business. So that's one use case for, for using this. Thank you. Other questions? Otherwise, I think it's time for lunch then, right? I'll put it in a question because this is the question around. Uh, but isn't it true you, uh, you you said it's importing, Archimedes is just importing uh, your models into some other media? But it also shows the models created a viewer that's yes, it's, 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 it, it has an import feature and it displays the data that you have imported. You saw the, the, the wiki pages that result from that. But of course, the idea is that once you have it in your semantic media wiki, you can display it any way you like. It's in there, you can reuse it. So you can create a specific page for an application management department with data about their applications, probably combined with data from the real-time monitoring system. Because if it's linked data, you can uh, there's an extension where you can use Sparkle to real-time query a triple store and to show that data in your semantic media wiki. So you can make a specific page for application and you could make a page for a project manager where he could select uh, architecture principles that are relevant to his project. So you don't need this these standard pages. You can do anything you like, just because the data is in there. Yeah, but the graphical representation makes me think of what uh, Alexander uh, showed uh, yesterday uh, with BPMN, uh, and his solution uh, lets you dynamically uh, fill in your BPMN model and give attributes and semantic data about the elements. That is fantastic because we, we already we already had for some time the I think it was in the flex diagrams extension where you could display BPMN models. 
but it was just a diagram. It would be much better, really fantastic, if we could have these BPMN diagrams and the objects on those diagrams in a semantic way. I, I didn't see the presentation, but it, that would be great because you could also combine your business process management data knowledge with your architecture data. It would be wonderful. We have a, a question from uh, online from Andrew. Are there different levels of access to data depending on user rights, especially in the DERA project? Um, that's a good question. Hi, Andrew. Um, well, the, the, the DERA project is, is, is an open architecture. So the, the, there's only a distinction between editors and, and public. Um, in your triple store, yeah, we use Apache Fuseki. You can use the, the, the authorization features of your triple store, of course, to limit data, limit access to the data in the triple store. And in Semantic Media Wiki, you can use um, whatever extension there is for authorization. So I think there was yesterday a presentation on enhanced way of authorizing access to content and Semantic Media Wiki. So the day before yesterday. Oh, the day before yesterday. Yeah. So is that an answer to the question? I guess so. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Are we all hungry? Okay, Thanks then, very much. then, then, then this this concludes our session on linked data. I think. Eh? Yeah. So, yeah, um, yes. thank you all. Uh, thank you for the wonderful presentations. Um, and I hand over the word to. Yeah. Thank you.